Minus four. Minus four. Shh. Frenzy. Yeah. Frenzy. Uh, X. Plus four. Plus four. Ethan, I'm trying to do it. Okay, you're both going. Ethan, you I'd like to start this. What he'll do? This thing. Shh. Ooh. Okay. That's perfect. It's a difference of squares, right? Remember yeah. that? Okay, well, let's, then, let's put this into uh, an equation and then solve that equation using this approach, right? We would normally factor it. Agreed? Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, been great in your test. Plenty of you are understanding mm -hmm. that. Okay. X minus 4, X plus 4. Okay, that's, once we factored it, we're saying this times this equals 0. What do we do with what do we do next? You go x minus 4 equals 0, uh -huh. and x plus 4 equals 0. Yeah. And then you do, you add 4. Minus 4. And then you subtract 4. Yeah, exactly. Just trying to help. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's perfect. That's exactly how we would solve it, uh, like, um, in chapter 9 on your test that you just took. You would factor it and set each factor equal to 0. But we can. Do a little less work. <laughs> so let's start over again. We do x squared minus 16 equals 0. But instead of factoring, so each factor equals 0, all that kind of stuff, uh, there's only an x squared. Like, let me kind of show you what I'm talking about. What if it was x minus 16 equals 0? What would you do to solve x? Sixteen. Add 16 to both sides, and x would be 16, right? Well, of course, x would have to be equal to 16 because this thing, minus 16 is 0, so this thing would have to be 16. Wouldn't x squared, whatever x squared is, have to be 16? You see what I'm saying? Whatever x squared, whatever you put in for x, plug in for x and then square it, it would have to be 16, so then when it's in fact 16, make it 0. We can add 16 to both sides and find out x squared is equal to 16. Okay? So, it's like the easiest kind of equation might be like this. We, we have x plus 4 if we want to get x by itself. We subtract 4 on both sides, right? Get up! Okay? Then, maybe on down the road, we learned about an equation like this 2x equals 16. How do we cancel out that 2? Get x by itself. Divide by, Divide by 2, right? We did the, the inverse of multiplication. Okay. Right, so we learned about canceling out addition, canceling out subtraction, canceling out multiplication, canceling out division with multiplication. Okay, now we want to cancel out this square. What would be the exact opposite of squaring a number? The square root? The square root would be the exact opposite. So we take the square root of x squared, let's just check on that. Let's think about that. What's the square root of uh, 25? Five. Five. Why? Five five times five five. Five. Because 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, so is the square root of x squared mm. x? Yeah. yeah. Why? Because x times x, just like 5 times 5 gives you 25, x times x gives you x, x squared. So the square root of x squared must be x. That makes sense. Okay. So that's good. Now we get x on the left side of the equation. That's what we want, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look on the other side. We're going to have to do the same thing to both sides. It's always the case whenever you work with an equation, you do the same thing to both sides. Mm -hmm. Square root of 16, 4. Okay. So let's ponder this for a second. Let's go back one step to this equation. Remember how this used to be x squared equals 16. We're trying to solve that equation. We're trying to find a solution or solutions to that equation. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Like, when you find a solution to an equation, what does it look like? How do you know you found it? Both sides are equal. Uh -huh. What does it look like? Ooh. You plug in the numbers. Or you plug it in. You plug it in, and it works. Mm -hmm. and so both sides would be. When you plug this thing in, this number, right? It's not a. It's not a like a a bottle cap or a pile of sand, it's a number that you plug in for x. 
And if you plug it in for x and both sides of the equation will be equal, you know you did it right. You know you found the solution. Is 4 a solution to this equation, this one right here? Yeah. And more important than this one right here that we started out with? Yeah. If we plug in 4, if we plug in 4 and we square 4, we get 16. But can anyone be clever and think of a number, another number besides 4, that you can plug into this equation and get 16? Negative four. Negative four. Uh, Positive or negative four. Smart. Clever. She is clever. Okay. okay. So the long and best answer for why we say plus or minus four is because we're trying to solve this equation. Any number that can multiply by itself, because that's what square root means, any number that can multiply by itself and give us 16 is a solution. That's what we're looking for. Four does that, that, that one comes to mind very quickly. The square root of 16 is four. Square root of 25 is five. Square root of 64 is eight. Eight, right? But this negative, you don't really think of. But you have to include negative, because it is a solution to this equation. Because if you plug in negative four and you multiply it by itself, you get 16, right? Now, look at the amount of work that it took when we use the square roots idea. A little bit less than what we factored in, right? So if there is a, a square term that we can just take the square root of and cancel out the square, then that can make our, our work a little bit less. So uh, it's, a, it's a cool idea. And we're going to use that. You know, We're going to build on that idea a little bit. But we'll start out simple. There's no x term, just an x squared. So if we can get the x squared by itself, take the square root. Now we have something else that's you know an opposite. Right? The opposite of addition is subtraction. So we learned about subtract four on both sides and get x is negative four. Two x plus or two x equals sixteen. We learned about a long time ago. Divide by two on both sides. Here we have the opposite of squaring a number. That would be taking the square root of a number. So we cancel out squaring the square root. And we also include the negative. When you take the square root of both sides of an equation, make sure you include the positive and the negative. Right, Nathan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just made an obvious observation. So we're going to solve an equation, a lot like the one we just solved, using square roots. Rather than factoring, which totally works, but instead of factoring, let's use the square roots idea. Start off nice and easy. Solve that equation for x. Don't just guess what x is supposed to be. I, oh, I know what x would have to be. Try and work it through like, the way that I just showed you. So that when it becomes a more complex equation, you're not left saying, well, I don't know what it has to be. I can't figure it out. OK, I want you to, to listen closely, pay close attention to what I'm telling you. So don't take a break. You, if, if you're doing things like, um, no, just take the square root, x equals plus or minus 5. I know you know that x should be 5. It's not that hard of an equation. But it's not a difficult equation on purpose so that you can see why we would do oh, what we would do to a more complicated equation. No way. I'm going to shut the door. That was right here. Can you go scream at him first? Okay, I like Scream. Okay. I'm less interested in you figuring out the very easy solution to this equation. I'm more interested in you following. Uh, line of logic to get you to that answer for a specific reason. So what we're going to do is use this idea to solve more complicated equations. What if it's 5 times x plus 2 squared minus 35 equals 17, right? We're going to build up to that, but we can't build up to that until you make yourself go through these steps. Get the squared thing by itself first. Get the 
x squared by itself. In this case, it's very simple. Add 25 to both sides. Then take the square root of both sides. And we have to include positive or negative. Can somebody explain why we have to include the positive or the negative? Like both of them as solutions? Because it could be either one, okay? Can you explain how you know that for sure? Can you convince me if I'm, if I'm doubting that it could be either one? I think it could only be five. <laughs> okay. Could, so you're the factor anyway. Yeah. So, but if I, if I, if I just said that this is a solution to this equation, is there anybody who can say, tell me convincingly why that would have to be a solution, why I have to include it? A solution means that we have a number that you plug it into the equation, it makes the equation true, right? So knowing that, why would I have to include the negative five as a solution? Okay, plug it into where? Um, x. And for x, okay, so I plug negative in x, or sorry, negative 5 in for x. What am I going to do with that? that? Uh, I guess square. Square. I'm going to square the whole thing. Like that? Well, that would certainly make sense, right? Because x is getting squared, so whatever you plug in for x gets squared. What does this mean, negative 5 squared? It means it means negative 5 times itself. That's positive 25. And that is positive 25. So negative 5 is a number that you can multiply by itself and get positive 25. That's why I need to include it as a solution. That's why if you take the square root of both sides, you have to include positive and negative. Okay? Um, okay, now let's solve this equation. Go ahead. Uh, so again, the new idea is to take the square root of both sides. So in order to do that, we need to get x squared, or whatever's being squared, whether it be x squared, or m squared, or t squared, it doesn't matter, by itself so we can take the square root. Okay. How's that going to go? How do we do that? Subtract 36. Okay. Do you think what you get? Right. And we take the square root of both sides. Right. And what do we get for our answer? Plus or negative? Minus 6. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put a question mark there. How would we prove that the square root of negative 36 is, say, 6? You can't. You can't? Why? You can't get negative. Why not? The minus a negative times negative is yeah. positive. Right, that's what we're saying. The the solutions are numbers that multiply by themselves to give you negative thirty six. Let's test them out. Six times six, right? Six squared. If we plug that in for x, we're gonna square it. But that's thirty six. So that doesn't work. How about negative six? Well, we are going to multiply whatever we plug in for x. We're gonna multiply it by itself. Negative times negative. It's positive. Positive thirty six. So this one doesn't work. Either one of them work. No. Maybe we missed it. Is there some other number that would work? No. Just doesn't seem like it. There's six times six has got to be the number part of it. And then we've got to take care of the sign part of it. We only know about two signs, positive or negative. Both of them give us positive 36. So as far as we know, of the numbers we've ever heard of, we've learned about or used to this point, None of them work. None of them can multiply by themselves to give you negative 36. We have to invent a whole new kind of number that could multiply by itself, identical, and get a negative number. Now, that has happened already. Those numbers are invented, they exist, and they get used. Do you know what they're called? Yeah. It seems like you were talking about them like you knew about them. No, I said we should make a new number and call it nymph. Call it what? Nymph. Nymph? Yeah, the number here in between eight and nine. Yeah. That is. A <laughs> okay. Anyway, there are numbers. Don't click it. There are numbers 
that will multiply by themselves and give you negative numbers are called imaginary numbers, but we're not going to worry about it. Okay. We're just going to say no solutions. There are no numbers that we know of, real numbers, that will do what we need this number to do. Yeah? So you're going to give us four? No. How about three? Still two. I would need to get better participation in this. To have that kind of a deal. You know, like five dollars. Not asking questions about how much time you have. Have to be five for the for the number part. Negative part at the end. You have to it out. So, so no solution. Just write no solution. That's right. When, when you take the square root of a negative number, at least in that this stage right now of our math series, we're just going to say no solution. We're going to assume we're working at only real numbers, and there are no real numbers that can multiply by themselves and give you negative numbers. So that's out. Okay. It's about and it's like 2x squared minus 12. Now, keep in mind that what you want to do is get the square thing by itself so you can take the square root. That would include everything that's not part of that square, including the 2. We don't want the 2 there. We, want, we don't want to take the square root of the 2. Get rid of that 2. Get rid of that 12 so that we only have a square thing so we can take the square root of it. As simple as possible. Okay, first, what do we do? Add 12 to both sides. We want to get the square thing by itself. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Divide by 2 on each side. What's that? 6. 6. Yeah. And then, square root. Root. we have been learning about taking the square root. Big new idea. No solutions. Why do you more. say no solutions? <laughs> because we have to do the small or imaginary number. A what? Not Is it imaginary? No, no. that's what you said. Real. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's Real. Yeah. When I said that there's no real solutions, hey, it was because we can't multiply a number by itself and get a negative. Either positive times positive is positive, or negative times negative is positive. It's two negative numbers. Well, it's not. Just kidding. Well, maybe it is. Two negatives multiplied by each other give you a positive. Yeah. But the thing that yeah. is troubling is what is the square root of six? <laughs> well, it's not. It's like 2.4449017. Wait. Something like that. What did you say it was? 2. Point. Four times something. Two point four four is your guess. How will we check and see if that is the square root of six? Well, you do two point four four times two point four four. Okay. Two point four four. Yeah, I know. I looked on the calculator. Oh. Wow. Okay. Well, it's close. Wow, really? Uh, two times two is four, right? And three times three is nine. Um, we want to get six, we don't want to get four, we don't want to get nine, we want to get six, which is okay, I got between four and nine. Four, four, nine, nine. Oh, so, 2.44 is too small. 2.44, Thank you. Um, eight, eight, nine. Eight, eight, nine, seven, four, three. Thank you. I was telling that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, now, okay. if we square this number, multiply it by itself, <laughs> multiply it by itself, we should get pretty close to six, really, really close. <laughs> now we can do that with the calculator by saying, well, 2.44 is too small. So we'll go 2.44 2 
nine. Well, that's too small, so we'll go two point four four nine four. We just keep putting a little bit more on, a little bit more on, a little bit more on, until we get closer and closer and closer to six when we multiply this number by itself. Okay. Um, or we can, which I'm sure that this is where this number came from. There's a, a square root function. Take the square root of any number. It'll give you at least quite a few decimal places of the number that is the square root of mm -hmm. 6 or whatever number you're looking at. Um, so there is a number. It does exist. It will multiply by itself to give you 6. <laughs> it's just that we can't write it down as a decimal. You can't write this thing down as a decimal because it's a decimal that goes on forever and ever and ever. And it never repeats. It never stops. Okay. So the exactly right answer would be plus or minus the square root of 6, the number that multiplies by itself to give you 6. So if you put no solutions, would that be wrong? It would be wrong because there are solutions. There are two real numbers, a positive one and a negative one. They are close. To 2.4494. This squiggly equal sign means close to or approximately. Thank you. So the, the kind of cool thing about taking the square root of both sides is that uh, with, say, this equation, not this equation, this equation right here, we could factor it x plus 5 times x minus 5 equals 0, set each factor equal to 0, and solve each equation, and find both solutions. Because you're loud. Yeah, because you're distracting. But this one, we can't factor. It's not. It's it's not really uh, something we can factor. We can I mean, fact, factor out of two, but we we can't get it as factors of uh, something with x in it times something with x in it. Set them equal to zero and solve for x in both of those uh, equations. But using the square root, we can find exactly the right answers, right? exactly the right solutions, um, where we couldn't have before. And by using this idea, of course, we're going to have to expand the idea out to more complicated equations like this one. We need to be able to solve equations like that. But once we can, we can then solve any quadratic, anywhere, anytime, any quadratic equation at all. But let's Continue to, to work on this. Let me give you uh, an equation you work on solving it. Find a solution or maybe solutions to that equation. Okay. It seems like whoever it is, it's someone. It's yourself. Okay. Um, first, we want to get the x squared by itself, just like we would if it were just x. We want to solve for the unknown piece. The piece we don't know is the, the x squared. We're going to get it by itself. So, add 12 to both sides. Three. Up until now, we haven't used anything that we haven't used before, you know, before this day. But now, we're going to use this new idea of taking the square root of both sides. So we'll take the square root of both sides. Just 
get in the habit of when you take the square root of both sides, just plus or minus. Right? The number that you find is going to be a positive number and a negative number. You're going to find two different numbers that will solve this equation. And it will satisfy the equation. Okay? Now, if you go to take the square root of this number and you get some decimal, I would just say leave it as the square root, the square root of eight. there's not a number that's exact, might as well use the exact number. It's kind of like if we had uh, 3x minus 1 equals 0, and we add 1 to both sides, and we divide by 3. We could write 0.33, but would that be right? Exactly right? Practically, yeah. Because 1 divided by 3 is not exactly 0.33. 1 divided by 3 is exactly one third. There's not a good way to represent this in decimals because what one third is in decimal is 0.3 repeating forever. If you do 0.33, put a little dash over 3. You could. Um, That'd be wrong, so? No, that would be fine. But I think it's a lot easier to just write 0.33. And it's, I'm just saying it's like that. It's like that. We can write the square root of 8 or we can write 2 point whatever it is, uh, all these decimal places and still have it be an approximation. Or just write square root of eight, it's exactly right. Ethan? So for those other ones that we wrote like no solution for, yeah. would that be wrong then? No, that's, that, that's correct, there are no solutions. Now can somebody recall why we write no solutions for some of them? Because there's no solution. Okay, what makes it impossible for there to be a number that works in that equation? What's different about that? those equations? Oh, it's, oh that was the thing. Because you could do something. Mm. Oh, they're negative. Yeah, we were taking the square root of negative numbers, not just yeah. eight and seventeen and these weird numbers, but negative numbers. So it's like impossible. Okay. Yeah. Right. Those are the ones where it's impossible with real numbers. So in negative, you put no solution with the ones if they just don't have a number. If they don't have a nice one, yeah, just leave it square root of whatever that number is. I. cancels out the square. The square and the square root cancel each other out. X plus 2. Oh, okay. Also, oh, it's just a get rid of the square. What? It just, yeah, it just cancels out the square. Okay. Now, this is different from x squared plus 4. You might be tempted to say that the square root of this is x plus 2. You would be wrong. Okay, that's not the case. No. Do you see how these are these are different things? Also, this is this x plus two is not x squared plus four. This x plus two squared. Or x plus two squared is x plus two times x plus two. And if you multiply all that out, you would get not just x squared plus two. Yeah. No. See, x plus two. Yeah. Times x plus two. Distribute oh. the x. x squared plus two x. Distribute the two, two x plus 4, x squared plus 4x plus 4, that's what's right there. The square root of x squared plus 4 is not x plus 2. In fact, there's not anything that's a nice square root of x squared plus 2. If you're doing this in your equation, it's, it's because you haven't gotten x squared by itself. Get the squared thing, whether it be x or y or even a parenthesis squared, get it by itself to start with. How do you what? Do that with that. With x squared plus 1. Well, like I said, maybe this would happen because, um, for instance, you had x squared plus 4 equals um, 20, just 20. 
x squared plus 4 equals 20. Well, what you should do here is subtract 4 on both sides, get x squared by itself. If you took the square root of both sides right now, you just shouldn't do that. It gets to be a mess because there is no square root of x plus x, square root of x squared plus 4 that works out very nicely. It's going to have to involve some imaginary numbers, which we don't even know about right now. So we'll forget about that. Instead, we'll just back up. Remember, we don't ever want to take the square root of just x squared plus 4. Let's subtract 4 from both sides and get plus or minus 4 for the solution. We don't ever want to do that. We can avoid it, and we should be able to avoid it every time. Only take the square root of, of just something that is squared, nothing more. Don't take square roots of x squared plus 4 or anything other than that. If, if you got a parenthesis squared, that's great. Take the square root of that, and it'll cancel out the square. Such as x idea on this. We can take the square root of a parenthesis squared, cancels out the square. The square root and the square cancel each other out. So we take the square root of both sides. What's the square root of x plus 3 squared? What? What? It's so funny, I can't hear you. Three. X plus 3? That's yes, the square root and the square. They're the exact opposite things. The square root of anything that's squared is whatever that thing is being squared. What's the square root of x squared? It's x. What's the square root of y squared? It's y. What's the square root of 4 squared? Well, that's the square root of 16. That's 4. That so just cancels out the square. The square root of x plus 3 squared is take the square root of the other side? When we take the square root of this side and the square root of this side, what do we get over here? The square root of 25, we say, is plus or minus 5. Don't forget about plus or minus 5. When we write that plus and minus, what does that symbol mean a plus on top of a minus sign? <coughs> really? <laughs> so, what we're saying is that x plus 3 could be positive 5, or x plus 3 could be equal to negative 5. Both of those would work. Okay, but we still don't have x by itself. So we need to say that. We need to say that x plus 3 could be 5, or x plus 3 could be negative 5. So now we've set up these two, two equations that we can further solve for x. Subtract 3 on both sides, x is 2. Subtract 3 on both sides, x is negative 8. So if we were to go back and plug in 2, we'd have 2 plus 3 squared, that'd be 5 squared, that'd be 25, that's exactly what we were supposed to get, we were supposed to get 25. We put in negative 8, negative 8 plus 3 squared, that'd be negative 5 squared, that'd be 25, just like it was supposed to be. So those two numbers that we found, We'll either cause the parentheses right here to be 5, or negative 5, so if we square either 5 or negative 5, we get 25, which we're supposed to be. Okay, you try it. Square part of it. Mm -hmm. So we do what to cancel that out? Square root. 
take the square root of a square thing, and you'll cancel it out. Both those things will cancel each other out. We're left with what on the left side? That's right, on the right side? Six. Six. Positive or negative. Positive or negative, six. Mm -hmm. All right, now what? You add seven. Add seven. Add seven. What? Okay, we can think of it in a couple different ways. Okay, or we can have this. I had some people, I don't know, maybe it made more sense. We'll add seven yeah. to both sides. Okay, but this this right side is represents two different uh, numbers, a positive six and a negative six. Essentially, we're doing this right now. Well, we're gonna add seven to a six. What do we get when we add seven to it? A positive six? 13. 13. But we have to put the other solution when we add 7 to a negative 6. And keep it going. On. That's a positive 1. Yeah. If we do that over here, that's exactly what we're doing. Right? We add 7 to a positive 6, we get 13. We add 7 to a negative 6, and we get positive 1. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on we yeah. still want to get x by itself. Okay, and we're just kind of throwing a little a little more, a little more. Right. A little bit more in the way of getting the square by itself, and they're taking the square root and getting x by itself. Figuring out what x would have to be. So right now, what's in the way of having the square thing by itself? Negative two. How do we get rid of that negative two? Add it to the other side. Right. First mini goal here is to, uh, like, like mini achievement, is to get the square thing, whatever the thing is being squared, by itself. So first we have to do what? Subtract, Subtract seven. <laughs> X plus five squared equals 25. Then we need to, well, I did square root. Nice, square root. And it's X plus five equals Plus or minus five. Plus or minus five. And then subtract five. Just make sure you subtract five from positive five and negative five. X equals five minus five is zero. Negative five minus five. Negative ten. Two solutions. So I get zero. We get zero plus five is five. Five squared plus seven is thirty-two. Negative ten. Negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. Square that, you get positive 25 plus 7 is 32. Okay. So for a lot of these, we're going to get two solutions. Can you do fraction? Hmm? Can we have fraction, you think? Yeah. We could have fraction. Um, how about 3x plus 2 squared? Sides, x plus 2 squared equals 49. 
we want to cancel out that square. We want to peel out this, the layer that's you know surrounding the x, the square. We want to get rid of that. 3x plus 2 equals, what do we get on the right side? Plus or minus 7. Yeah. Remember, plus or minus is not something you just tag on to the last part of your solution. It's from taking the square root. Okay. Whatever 3x plus 2 is, whatever this parentheses is, it needs to come out to be either 7, so that when you square 7, you get 49, or negative 7, so when you square negative 7, you get 49. I have some copies for you. Yeah, do you? No, they're not. I thought you said copies. There you go. Have a nice day, too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> take that into account. So what would we do next? Subtract 2. Subtract 2, which is trying to get x by itself. Mm -hmm. Well, see, what we need to do is subtract 2 from positive 7 and from negative 7. So from here, it kind of splits off into two different problems, two different equations. So we get 3x is by itself. All right, this is where we take positive 7 and subtract 2. What do we get if we take positive 7 minus 2? Negative 5. 5, OK. But if we take negative 7 minus negative 2, nine. Negative 9. Mm -hmm. All right, get x by itself. What's next? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. Mm -hmm. x is 5 thirds. Divide by 3. Yeah. x is negative nine three. Three. Negative 3. So we get fractions each time.